<laughs> How cool was it uh, for Azarie to have a moment like that and a play like that? He's, he's gotten to play more and more um, and given up some plays, but for him to go make a play, and I know the game was out of reach, but still just for his confidence and his development for him to have a moment like that. Yeah, it was, it was good for him. It was good for us um, to show you the confidence of the guys in him. You know, when the ball was in the air, Shaheem was the field safety and his, his, the ball left and his arms go up. And I, and I actually, my eyes went to shy and then Azaria caught it when I watched the film on the plane that night. It was just, you know, so the guys get confidence, Azaria. I mean, the one thing I think he has always done naturally is what he did there on the deep ball. You know, he just, he runs the route and he plays it like a wide out, you know, and um, where he's really made his strides is just on his run fits, his tackling, um, some of the intermediate routes, um, his communication has got to continue to improve of just being quick with it. Uh, but that's just with reps. But, you know, I expected him to make that play, and he did too, and so did his teammates. It was good to see for him. Uh, Greedy's interception was a kind of a different play. Um, it almost seemed like he knew, like, when he redirected, the, I guess, the other receiver, and it looked like he knew where he was going. Did he know where the throw was going, or is that just his assignment on that play? Uh, yes and yes. Yeah, that was part of the coverage, and you know, we listen. You have coverages that you're in man coverage, and you line up over people. You have coverages that you have man coverage on the guy inside of you or outside of you, based off of releases, and so you know, whatever it is, it's all forms of match, and so you know, part of you know coming out because we we did a great job with our punt team. We had the ball down there a bunch, and there were certain things that they were going to do when that ball was down there. It just happened to be we had them down there a bunch. So it got to be emphasized a lot, and um, that's a coverage we play. And you know, Greedy was there, and he made it. And so, you know, that's his second pick of the year, and you know, he's really coming on. So this is going to sound like second guessing, but I'm not second guessing. Early in the first half, when Jordan threw his interception, you know, Miami was pinned deep in their own territory. I think on their one or two yard line, and you brought out, I guess, what people might consider like your second unit. And I don't think Fabian and Coop and, and those guys and Jared Verse came out. It, that early in the game where they're still fresh. I mean, it all worked out, obviously. So can you kind of explain why you go to that kind of personnel group in that situation? Yeah, up front, you know, you don't always control when you can sub up front. And so, you know, we had, you know, seven, three and out. So it would have had the ability to do it. But going into the game, you just don't know. And so you have to start some other guys on certain series. Uh, number one, to keep guys fresh and to keep a roll. And two, because we have confidence. You know what I mean? So, I mean, if they're in the game that early, you know, it's not really backups. You know, if you're out there, you're a starter. And, you know, that's, that's how we do it. And um, we got confidence, especially with that group up front. We're deep um, and we're deeper than we've ever been at this point because we've had to fight through injuries and guys have stepped up and they've played well. And so, you know, that's why we sub. It seems like Jamie is continuing to make more and more plays as you guys expand his his versatility, his role. Uh, can you talk about that and then the play he had to stop uh, by the by the end zone and how impactful that, that sequence was? Yeah, I think, you know, as you, you know, I think I've had a pretty good feel of what Jamie's really good at here, probably about game four last year. And so, you know, it's allowed us to play with him, but you've got to play defense, not just about individual skill sets. Um, so we've used Jamie in multiple ways because he's smart, he understands it. Um, he's a good tackler. He's a great blitzer. He's really good in short area spaces and man coverage. He's really good in zone coverage. He's good coming out of the post. He can do a lot of things really, really well. Um, and as the season's gone on and our guys have become a little bit more identifiable around him, um, just the ability to identify him as a blitzer too, you know, really helps us. And, you know, so, you know, he's come on. Um, in the numbers, but like I told him at the beginning of the year when the ball wasn't finding him very much, like just play within the system, you know, play as hard as you can, make the right decisions, and the plays will show up because he's going to be on the field a lot. And that's happening here. And, uh, you know, that play down the red zone, you know, in a game like that where you dominate from start to finish, you know, one of the best moments in the game, actually it was probably our worst moment on defense, when we misfit a ball and we got blocked up and they hit a ball out, um, on that one long run they had, but to see seven of those guys turn and sprint and chase him down um, was really impressive. You know, I think Shaheem got him on the ground, but Azarie caught him quick. To watch Jamie as the backside blitzer 
and chase the ball. You know, with his burst, DJ Lundy was in that grouping. I mean, it was just it was an greedy was in that grouping. It was just an impressive play. And then to put our heels on the goal line and then fight our way back um, and force them to make errors. You know, that that's that's what playing defense is about. Sometimes, you know, sometimes it's about three and outs, it's about takeaways. Yes. But sometimes you got to give yourself a place to stand on a big play and stand up and send them backwards. And, you know, Jamie had a critical play on that second down on that blitz. And, you know, he did exactly what we coached him to do. And he did it in his way um, and, you know, made sure that Kordak stayed down. I know Pat Payton has made quite a few plays. It kind of has, seems like he has a knack for doing that. Probably no more impressive than that fumble where he, where it looked like he might have been getting held too. How have you seen him? I mean, now quite a few weeks into his larger role, how have you seen him grow since kind of first he, he got those first reps? I think it's the confidence. Um, and the confidence has been cr created through multiple layers of things, right? The confidence came in his just last year when he redshirted and showed up to practice, put the film work in, then the offseason, showed up, doesn't miss reps, you know, pushes through things, um, put on the right amount of body weight, got stronger, um, watched more tape, practiced, learned, took the coaching, and he just kept doing it and doing it and doing it. And you put that together with the ingredients of skill and, and a smart player that's got toughness to him. Um, and then you put him in games and he has some success. Now that builds some swagger with the confidence of the work that he's done. And he feels like he's earned the right to make his plays. And he's got enough talent um, on top of the hard work to make the plays. And I think that's what you're seeing. It's coming together for him. And like we've said when we got here, once, you know, we started to get these guys developed and allowed them to go play. And he's had guys in front of him that have played that position that have been ACC Defensive Players of the Year, NFL players, guys that have been, you know, all conference players. You know, and he, he can picture it. And then he puts in the work. And when his opportunity comes, he shines. And, you know, um, he's scratching the surface of where he's going to be at. But, you know, he's got a really big time future ahead of him. And, um, you know, we'll keep pushing him. He'll keep pushing himself. Uh, when you guys went down there two years ago, um, you were coaching a lot of guys that probably didn't know you all that well, and they didn't know you didn't know them all that well because of the COVID year and everything else. And then to go down and do what you guys did Saturday, like how gratifying is that as a coach for those players? You know, a lot of those guys were on that defense two years ago that had a real tough night. Yeah, I mean, you know, I don't want to say that. You know, it's easy to sit up here and say, well, each year is each year, each game is each game. Um, and that is true with your mindset of how you've got to prepare each week. But, you know, you don't forget some of those times and um, as much as you want to, you know. But it's all part of taking the experiences and creating new experiences. And the new experiences need to be better than the old ones, you know, whether they were successful or not. And uh, I think we're doing that. You know, I think you know, we've got a lot of guys on this defense that have been playing for a lot of number of years. Some played before they were ready. Um, and they've had to develop through, they didn't have the Pat Payton experience, right? Like they had to play right away and they had to go in there and learn through failures uh, and learn through um, unsuccessful experiences. Um, but, you know, we just got to keep on it. And, um, you know, it was good to go down there and get a win. With, with the development of some of the younger players on the defensive line, I guess just from a depth purpose, like you're able to roll guys in now, what has that done for you here in the back half of the season? To, maybe like a guy like Fabian who's working his way back to be able to kind of spell him at times. How impactful has that been? Yeah, I mean, it's impactful in practice too because the level of intensity in practice continues. Um, you know, listen, if, if I'm a backup and I'm the backup, name the position, but I don't play very much, Yes, we want them to be robots, go out there, practice hard, listen to the coaching, grow, improve. Um, and we have that conversation with the scout team players. Um, but if you're not playing much and you, know, you keep getting the reps in practice, you know, it's a constant motivation to make sure that they're um, valuing those experiences in practice. Now, when they're playing in game reps, you know, I don't want to say it's easier, but it, they can see the future. They can see the progression. They can see uh, the playing time earned. And, uh, you know, every 
role isn't always going to be the same, right? And every backup isn't going to play the same amount. Every third corner doesn't play as much as the third D tackle. I mean, every room's a little bit different. But if the message is consistent from the staff, from the head coach to the coordinator to the position coaches um, to the strength, and I think that's where we do a, a good job of just trying to make sure that we make it about today and we make it about their growth and their improvement um, and being their absolute best in the moment. And um, usually that leads to a hunger. I think sometimes with the transfer portal, uh, when you bring in players that have had experience at their prior school, sometimes we, fans and media, think it's going to be plug and play. But how far has Greedy come since he's gotten here? You mentioned he's coming. But in what ways has he, has he become a, be a better player? Yeah, I think just his comfortability, um, not only within our football program, um, with his teammates, the scheme, um, how we practice. I mean, there's a lot of changes that go on with these guys. Um, and, you know, sometimes it, it becomes really seamless. Um, but the one constant with Greedy is his attitude has always been very positive and upbeat. I mean, you guys have been around him. I mean, he's got a good bounce to him. Um, but, you know, sometimes you, you recruit guys that come in and they're instant impact. Sometimes, you know, they fight for reps. Sometimes they don't get the role they're looking for. Uh, but if you just stay at it, and Greedy's one of those guys, he's kind of stayed with it. You know, he, he came in here, he was starting for an ACC school, came in here, and he's played good football. But, you know, I think any of these kids want to play more. I mean, they wouldn't be the right type of kids if they didn't want to. You know, it's just understanding that you want to do what's best for the team and you want to push yourself to be the best. And once the roles are dictated, go be the best within your role and understand that usually when you do that, your role will increase. You know, he came in and I think, you know, to have him and Kevin both playing at that one spot is huge for us. Um, you know, it's a spot, as you guys know, that is going to be on the field 95% of the game. And so to have two guys that we trust um, that, that are great teammates and work hard towards it, and, you know, it was really valuable to our defense. Uh, yeah, for the third week in a row, I guess you don't quite know who the quarterback is that you're going to be playing. What, what do these two guys do differently? Um, you played Schrader last year, and he, he ripped off a couple of really big runs. He's, a, he's an impressive athlete, but what do they look like with him, and what have they not looked like without him, and what are you preparing for? Yeah, there's a lot more tape with him, right? You know, last year's film, even though they have a new play caller this year, you know, this year's film, I mean, they got off to a 6-0 and start. They were as hot as any team in the country. And, um, you know, I think he's really improved as a, as a, as a passer. Um, I think the system has helped him out. And just his second year as a player, you've seen his growth, um, and he's done a really good job. You know, the backup that had to come into the Notre Dame game and then got the start against Pitt, you know, there's less film. But you, know, you even look at the Pitt game and, you know, they didn't have much success on offense. But you see the tools. You know, he, he actually he throws a good deep ball. Um, he is a good mover. Um, there's probably more similarities to those two than differences. You know, I think the biggest difference is just experience and confidence right now with Schrader. You know, he's done it for a good amount of time, whether it was at Mississippi State or Syracuse. And just he's got a lot more information out there that we're able to study on. You know, the other guy that, you know, played, you know, is a little bit less. Um, but you definitely see the skill set and the reason why he's been highly recruited. Earlier this morning, I think Sam announced on social media he was thinking about possibly transferring and then later removed it. And we asked Mike about it. He kind of just talked about the, the broad challenges of being a coach in this day and age with the transfer portal and just kind of sticking with kids. Not to go into specifics, but can you kind of maybe characterize the conversations you have with Sam or a freshman of, of his sort of stature and how that works out it's, itself out, hopefully? Yeah, I mean, I agree. There are some challenges in college coaching nowadays with this. But there's probably more challenges being a freshman college player. I mean, there's so much information. When you're a high school player um, of the magnitude of the guys we recruit, I mean, you send one post and you'll get more attention than some of us have received in a lifetime. And that becomes contagious, right? And, you know, it doesn't mean it's all bad. Um, it just, you know, these guys, when they come here, they want to be superstars. And we want them to be. And sometimes it's hard to do that right away. And you never want to lower their expectations. Um, you just want to help paint the picture of, OK, this is how we're going to get there. And some roads aren't all the same. You know, I mean, just look at us. You know, from last year at DB, you know, Kevin Knowles comes in. He basically plays from that Notre Dame game on and averages 60 snaps. 
Duke Cooper doesn't play at all, you know, battles injuries, comes back, then becomes a really, really good player. Shaheem Brown, who could end up being one of the better ones, barely played last year. And now he's got a significant role and he's blocking kicks to win games. And so those are three guys recruited at the same time that have all very different um, roads in a short way. And so, uh, you know, all I would say is, you know, it's not, these guys have a great situation, right? They're at a great university. Um, you know, we take great care of them, but it's not easy, you know, and, you know, we've got to be there to support these guys through the successes and the hard times. And even when it's going really well, know that, like, you know, there are difficult situations these guys have to deal with, um, sometimes personally, sometimes from the outside, and, you know, we just got to be there. Um, as a coach, you always want to help them get to the places they want to go to and they can't get to by, by themselves. And that's our job. And, um, you know, we'll be there for all of our guys um, through successes and through the hard ones. And so, you know, just there's a lot to unpack with, you know, these kids going through the recruiting process, um, playing at major universities. And, um, you know, it's just there's a lot of, lot of good endings to these stories, but the stories have a lot of pages. And, you know, we got to help paint the picture of what these things need to look like. Okay. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, guys. Thank you. See you all.